Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host Dario and as always before we jump in, um, a little reminder, you can always get us a cup of tea, coffee, uh, a little donation helps us a long way in keeping up this these proc talks and the proc space and everything. Um, so we appreciate every um, support you can get us. And now, well, with without further ado, um, I'm happy to welcome welcome back uh, a wonderful guest, Max Mowbray. We had Max on here last year with uh, others by no one. Book two came out. That was uh, an amazing uh, twenty. 21 release right <laughs> oh um, yes yes and now um yeah a new face is allison blake Dunninger from flummox hello that's and, like dario yeah max is also in flummox obviously and uh yeah well i'm so happy I'm, I'm 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 super happy to to have you on the proc talks here uh back uh, back last year when when we when i talked to max about uh others by no one and everything we of course also talked about flummox and uh, i think it was pretty recent that you had a joint uh flummox max and and uh there were a lot of, lots of exciting things going on uh, one of one of the most exciting things, of course, being the new album, the first Flamox album that you are also part of, Max, right? Um, yes. Which is Reflamox, Reflo and it it, it once this episode drops, it's gonna be out already. Uh, April first is the release date, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I want to know everything about this album. It's a it's a really fun ride, um, but maybe before before we really jump into the um, significance of the album and how it was made and and written and produced and recorded and all that, maybe Alison, uh, since you are the face of the band and I guess also founding member, maybe you can yes. uh, give us a quick rundown uh, of the story so far. Um, where does Flamox come from? What what are you about? What kind of band is Flamox? <laughs> um, well, first of all, we're a very weird band. Uh, we uh, I, I consider what we do genre fluid. We just kind of uh, because, like, you know, we want to make sure that you know we're able to encompass all the music that we're digesting and listening to ourselves, and uh, our output definitely reflects that and we um we try to make every single release sound different from the last um and sometimes subtle ways and sometimes drastic ways um but i formed the band with uh my uh my best friend drew back in um the summer of 2012 um and uh, we started off as like a three-piece sort of deal and then uh, over the years, we've just added people who wanted to be a part of it and uh, wanted to enhance our sound. And uh, now we have a uh, lineup that features uh, Matts, and uh, we have another <clears throat> we have another guitar player uh, named Chase McCutcheon, who also uh, mixed and produced the record that we're about to put out. Um, and we have a, our keyboardist Jesse Peck and our longtime drummer of about six years, uh, Alan Pfeiffer. And uh, we've just been like trying to kick ass for the last few years and uh you know um that's kind of where we're at right now about to about to get on a tour about to put out an album and uh you know just uh flummox folks <laughs> yeah wonderful um yeah you already mentioned the lineup uh, uh getting bigger and bigger um so far you have uh, two other um releases out one album from 2018 intellectual hooliganism Right. Mm -hmm. And then the 2020 EP yes. in high insight. Um, mm -hmm. So now you're a um, six piece uh, and and also um, 
what I found funny and and really cool was that that in in the credits, uh, like on Facebook, you 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 credit Max as also as second base. <laughs> so yes. so is, is there actually instances where where you where you will uh, play two two bases at the same time? Um, you know that would be interesting. Yeah, we're we're definitely talking about doing that sort of thing, and um, well. There's also like more of an option for me as a front person to uh, not have to have a 30 pound tree trunk strapped to my abdomen. And um, in those instances, you know, Max or uh, Chase uh, will be taking over bass duties. Plus, I mean, they're already playing like extended range guitars and, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, taking over those bass frequencies anyway. So, yeah, it's just more of a um, like, it's basically switching our around. Base. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just swapping around. We we're all like uh most of the band are multi-instrumentalists to some degree. So we try to utilize that as much as possible. Yeah. Wonderful. So um yeah, um between 2020 and now after the in hindsight EP and uh now the release of what is to be the second uh studio album full length, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. so at what point did, did you start working on Reflamuxed and, uh, yeah, at what point did Max join as well? And, and how did that start? How did things kick off for Reflamuxed? So Reflamuxed, um, is basically, uh, a, a little compilation of, um, so, so we, before Intellectual Hooliganism, we did, uh, what I call two demo albums. <laughs> they're not really, I mean, they're, you know, we, we were signed to Dry Droid Records, and we did two albums with them, but the production quality wasn't really very good. And there were a lot of uh, choices that were made um, on our behalf that we didn't really feel comfortable with. And, you know, when we would play a lot of those songs live, they always sounded a lot better. And, you know, it was almost like, you know, we'd be playing these gigs and people would be like, fuck yeah, you guys are great. But then you'd hand them a CD and it was like underwhelming. So what we ended up doing for Reflummixed, um, we had actually decided to do this before the pandemic because we're, we've been working on a, another album like of new material um, concurrently with this one. And uh, with Reflamics, we were like, why don't we just re-record a bunch of our of those songs that we had from back in the day? And originally it was just going to be an EP, but then it turned into a full length record and um, really took on a life of its own. Like a lot of those songs are, uh, they sound completely different <laughs> in like every aspect. And they, some of them might as well be new compositions, really. And uh, we started recording that. We did the rhythm tracks in like late April or early May of last year. And uh, from there, um, Max came into the picture around July of last year when um, we, our, our first show back as a band kind of was... Uh, uh, Ronnie James Dio Cancer Benefit show here in Nashville and we played a bunch of Ronnie James Dio material stuff from Rainbow, Black Sabbath, Elf and um, one of the so I was originally supposed to play um, with the drummer of Rainbow David Keith and a few other musicians and uh, the guitar player that we initially had picked out um, wasn't able to do it and so I hit up Max last minute and I was like Hey, can you learn uh, some rainbow? <laughs> and uh, and Max came down here and kicked ass. And then it, it almost like clockwork, within like three weeks, um, our other guitar player Chase fractured his wrist like two weeks before um, our real first show back, where we were playing. He fell right. He fell. Yeah, mm-hmm. he fell on his uh, when he was doing some um, like audio tech work. And he fractured his wrist two weeks before our big show bag. We were headlining a festival here. Oh, and uh, yeah. And so Max learned like 20 of our songs within like three or four days, which is absolutely absurd, especially if you've heard our music. Like it's not it's not like 20 easy songs, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, and she killed it and she killed it so hard. We were like, well you might as well just join the band. And so, and then, and we were still making reflummixed. 
uh, at the time. Most of it had already been recorded. Um, Max really came in at the time where we were not only mixing it, but adding a lot of the more uh, sound designy and you know those, those kind of touches and little after effects and that sort of thing. And uh, she contributed a lot to the mixing process. Um, but you know, like didn't get as much play time, unfortunately. But that's what the next album is going to be about. That, that 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 is saved for for the next real album. But you were. Uh, I, I mean, you said uh, uh, they they're sounding weird, wildly different uh, from the original recordings. Um, of course, both in production, what was the the initial goal, but but also some some of the arrangements and some some songs sound completely completely different. So, um, would you consider Reflamux as a regular studio album for Flamux? I would consider it at this point. Like if if. Like the initial idea wasn't necessarily to be like that, but then like because of how drastically the songs changed and like how much having the new members involved uh, bolstered the dynamics and the arrangements, um, I would consider it like definitely among, among like one of our like, official releases like it, it is basically the the way that these songs should have sounded in the first place yeah ultimately i've even been hesitant to to speak of it as an album of like re-recordings because of course it is on a practical level but like you said um with the addition of jesse peck who also played in the band uh, edge of reality a few years back um his sound design and choices and just having a keyboardist as well um really boost the sound because your options as far as like what you can use beyond just a traditional rock band lineup are you know hugely expanded with someone like that plus uh trump i mean flummox was a a trio a much more minimal lineup for a very long time yeah. and the addition of keyboards and um and all that's only been in the last few years and like you said um i joined the group at the last minute and just um we realized that we had something really special for sure so it's, it's definitely a proper studio effort it began as something to tide people over but it accidentally ended up being the best thing we have. So yeah, <laughs> it's really good. It's true though. Yeah, it's great. It accidentally ended up uh, like that. Wonderful. Uh, I, I, I might I might have to write that uh, timestamp down to use as a quote, as a little teaser for the episode. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, okay. maybe, that, maybe there's there's gonna be something even more cool and funny, <laughs> funny. <laughs> <All> funny. <Yes. laughs> um so yeah um y you already said at the beginning very beginning allison that that uh you're a crazy band you're a wild band a weird band um and uh we also heard that uh, you are able to do some ronnie james dio stuff so that is for for our listeners who uh, are not familiar with the name Flamox and who, who have never heard any music from you guys. Um, how would you describe your music other than some Ronnie James Dio influences that we would expect by now? <laughs> um, you know, frankly, like, I mean, I, and with the whole Ronnie James Dio thing, I mean, my, my voice is very much influenced by Ronnie. I would say he's probably like my biggest vocal influence. Um, But I wouldn't say Flummox's music really as a whole reflects that because I'm also influenced by, you know, people like Mike Patton, uh, Courtney Swain, uh, Janis Joplin, um, those kind of vocalists and, uh, and a lot of death metal and extreme metal uh, type stuff as well. I do some very uh, heavy stuff with my, with my voice. Um, but I guess like, you know i i tend to just kind of tell people like if they're you know like when i'm trying to describe what we sound like um well i mean i actually alan alan our drummer likes to be like if black sabbath had weird al yankovic as their front man <laughs> that's what flummox kind of sounds like and i can kind of get behind that with, with maybe the attitude of like the mothers of invention yeah it's we're very much very we're very much all like frank zappa yeah. uh fans and um Just anything that is put that has ever like tried to push boundaries and experiment a whole lot. Um, I mean, that's what we try to do. Um, we're a very theatrical performance art type band. Um, we do a lot of weird 
stuff on stage uh, that you with you know, possums even if you don't... and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like with possums. In trash cans. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, it's where we belong. It is in trash, but um, we uh, we we basically like form our whole show around uh certain theatrics and things of that sort to like because like even if like somebody who's at this show doesn't particularly care for the music they're going to remember seeing the band that did whatever the hell we it is we did that night i mean like you know there's definitely some like you know we've got the possum bit you know sometimes i get mostly naked and covered in paint uh or i kill baby dolls full of gummy worms and i feed the gummy gummy worms to the audience um it really you know and just whatever like there's just some sometimes i will it'll be like five or ten minutes before we're about to go on stage and i'll be like hey i got an idea let's do this and then (laughs) my band just has to do it because that's why they're there (laughs) at the end of the day it's like it's it's such a a, i don't know because we talk about prog a lot you know i mean i know that's that's your thing and with prog it's like um it implies a limitlessness um and I feel like with this group, that's very much actually achieved. Yes. Because, I mean, while I would say that, like, progressive ne- wouldn't necessarily describe the group itself, um, like that term, maybe, um, the diversity of it, I think, still stands. Like, someone said the word genre fluid. I think it might have been you. It was me. And um, <laughs> genre fluid really is accurate. I mean, because many of the tunes, even on this new record, like, these are songs that were written years ago. And they still... I still don't know what I would call it like in a day like today, like in today's musical landscape, there's like bluegrass elements in the same environment as black metal. And it's just like, is this a metal song? Is it a rock song? Um, and that, that's the real joy of it is it's, it's not just being random or, or, you know, prog for the sake of weird ideas. It's just many things come together in such a way that um, I don't know, makes us laugh. But also, like I said, we just care about putting on a show and doing pretty much whatever we want. So we've, we've had a great time doing that so far. I mean, a lot of this music was written before I was even like old enough to drink. Um, yeah, the reflummox and, stuff. Yeah, all the reflummox stuff. And, uh, you know, we took that as, you know, adults and uh, made it into um, just something completely different than what it initially was. So we're just always trying to uh, push our own boundaries. Like, you know, songs that we've been playing for years get changed and, and everything else. So. You never really know. Like we never play the same set twice. <laughs> because that would be boring, right? Absolutely, yes, for, for both us and the audience. And you, and you, you, you keep yourself uh, reinventing. So you maybe, maybe you are something like the mothers of reinvention. I'll take that. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> I bet some of that. I'll take that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They all they all call me mom in the band. So yeah, you're the band mom. I'm yeah. I'm I'm the band aunt. Yeah, Max is the cool aunt. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, and um, we take care of our boys. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's sweet. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we talked a lot about the music now. Um, and uh, initially, I wanted to to ask you, Max, as as uh, Allison, you were saying that uh, you always have have these weird ideas five minutes before the show and i i was going to ask you max uh how, how you react usually but but i get the impression that you 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 have fun uh rolling along with it I mean, um, do you? <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me that on camera <laughs> um because i mean yeah every single show we've done since i've been involved in the group um which again was only i'm, I'm just now in the band for about six months or so maybe a little more And um, every show, like, you know, we had a Christmas show. Allie was like, what if, what if I dressed up as Santa Claus? And I was like, well, that makes sense. And she's like, no, but what if, what if I just start smearing paint? All, well, no, you said you're going to take your, your top off and then start smearing paint all over all yourself, over my tits. All yes. over your tits. And, and you're just screaming and, and going, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. <laughs> you're better not. Yeah. And it was terrifying. It, it, it was. It was. It was. It, so, like, I had green and red paint, you know, it was Christmas colors, right? And, like, I didn't think too much about how they were going to mix when I, like, started smearing them all over me. And it just looked like I was, it just turned brown. So I was just like, 
Yeah, it was, it was, it was looking like some Gigi <laughs> Allen shit for yeah. sure. It's fun being us on stage with this group because I, I fear. There's a fear. Um, <laughs> so, I, I like you said, you know, you can say it's going to be a different show every night. And it, it, it really is um, just because, um, you know, we don't play to a click track. Our set lists are always different. Um, we, we have covers in the set from time to time. And um, it's just fun being in a group that's so, you know, reactionary. Like with, with my other group, Others by No One, much of that live show and the music that goes into it is very regimented. Like we learn the charts, we come together, we rehearse it, we go home. Flummox, we get together in a room, everybody hashes it out and we go, it would be stupid if we did this thing and then it just stays in, in the track. And I think that having that sort of fun with what you make, you know, because like however you get to the idea, as long as you're happy with it, whether or not it's from a joke or just from hashing it out with your friends, you know, um, you get there. So I really enjoyed the spontaneity and definitely the live shows with this, like, what if we did this is, is a huge part of what we do. We definitely thrive in the live realm. And I think that um, people will see that as we start to take this record around because our tour starts the day uh, the record comes out. Yep. So. Yeah. Oh, so that in, that's in three days, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh God! Well, when, you, when you say it like that, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, just because we're we're excited, but it's a okay. lot. Yeah, still got some shit we gotta do. For sure. <laughs> All right, really excited. Um, there's there's something going on with your audio. Some sometimes uh, it it gets muffled for a couple of uh, I'm move words. This. Uh, so uh, maybe you have an idea what's what's what why this is happening i don't know uh it, it's always only for a few words so i hope it it, it stays uh and we'll get through this um yeah, before, <laughs> just, just feel free to let us know before, like, we'll try to speak right in this area yeah. yeah cool so so before we took the detour about the the um yeah crazy stuff again i actually wanted to yeah go into the topic of what are you writing music about what are you singing about um of course uh on the in hindsight ep there was this anthemic uh, uh single uh trans girls need guns that mm -hmm. kind of kind of on the nose um yeah. so so <laughs> so what, what what are uh the topics uh you are writing about nowadays or like i mean that was the the songs on reflamux are old songs so what are the old songs about and maybe what uh what are the new songs in the future gonna be about is there gonna be a difference oh yeah um <laughs> so reflummix uh, you know again they those are all songs that are um you know that that the lyrical content really hasn't changed much with with those with, with those songs from when i first wrote this stuff and presented it years ago um and you know a lot of that stuff is just stuff that i wrote when i was a teenager about um you know what my life like certain characters and stuff like that that appeared in my life or media that i consumed you know like uh, i mean like one song is just uh based on a book called the great god pan uh by arthur Machen, who was an uh who was a somewhat of a horror liter uh like literature writer um just everything from like stuff like that to just like straight up like lewis carroll-esque nonsense uh in the case of something like Flummoxing Act One or something. Um, and, and a lot of like fantasy almost, like larger than life characters and, yeah, and things. Like, you know, the, the our song Custodian Ralph is about a real guy that I worked with, you know, um, and all that stuff is true about him pretty much that I wrote about in the song. Um, and like the Hummingbird Anthem is our own little myth, our own band mythos, so, you know, to add into all that, you know. Um, But as far as like, because of the fact that all of the, those songs are older, um, it's definitely not reflective of some of the stuff we are working on. Uh, a lot of the song topics, because like the album that we're currently writing and that we'll probably go into pre-production for sometime in the fall um, is mostly music that we wrote during the pandemic and things of that nature. and as everybody else kind of was it was it was a heavy time it was a, it was a very um uh, mentally uh disintegrating uh sort of era and uh and it's still we're still kind of you know dealing with that 
And uh, I wrote pretty much all of this music, um, lyrically speaking, with, um, with you know, that's kind of stuff on, on my mind, you know, and we have everything, you know, just it, it, it's, it's a pissed off album that we're making i'll put it that way it's 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 very um it's very upset with the way things are <laughs> and uh it's also uh, this this next record is going to be like completely different than anything we've ever done both uh lyrically and musically by a lot yeah we've i think that hooliganism onward really saw this band's lyricism turn more openly introspective and uh um definitely the Openly stuff that we're working on now <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually that's a good point but um but yeah just um you know uh, obviously we've we've just had a lot happen in this last little while because you know those first few records like you said like the the demo records definitely a little more uh tongue-in-cheek and fun and not that we're not like that but you know you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah definitely being a bit more open about you know identity and who we are and how we feel i think that's cool I would say so. It's definitely like like there's there there's definitely some some new flummox ground being broken with the next one, and I'm really excited about that more than anything else. But mm -hmm. I'm so glad that Reflummoxed exists because I always felt again that those songs deserved better than what they originally got. And even though the songs are about stupid things like you know a a, a janitor with an Elmo fetish and uh, smoking a hummingbird um and that sort of thing you know it's um it, it's the music and like it's basically just doing younger me a solid by getting that to sound <laughs> the way it does now yeah that, that sounds wonderful uh <laughs> i think uh yeah that's um if you can do a younger version of yourself a solid that's you you, you should do it right you kind of it's, That's it's... what I'm trying for. <laughs> that 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 poor guy was so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. If you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures, and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Theprogspace.com. Yeah, um, you you, uh, you already mentioned that you got you're gonna go on tour in a couple of days, and mm -hmm. um, we also talked about the mm, yeah mental effects of the pandemic, and and of course that also meant uh, that that a lot of live stuff couldn't happen happen in the last two years now. Uh, but I also know that that uh, I've seen uh, that that in in the US there's there's a lot of lives uh shows going on again i mean leprous is doing a huge ass tour right now for more than a month mm -hmm. um and and i've also seen um yeah uh, you uh like like um a, a couple of uh, other other us based bands uh uh, uh post about playing already again i mean here in europe uh, of course in your you the funny thing is i, I always find it kind of funny because uh, i would see europe as a whole uh kind of uh, a sim has maybe a, a little bit a similar size almost compared to the us alone and also um i think in the us because it's so huge compared to germany for example where i am right. um uh you you of course you 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 got all the different states and uh um the situation in in such a case of a pandemic uh would be vastly different in in new york and in la of course um so here in um in in europe uh, between the different countries uh, it is a uh, very different um uh, like the, the 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 waves and the peaks you know from the numbers and also of course how the government deals with it uh, how the restrictions right. and, and measures are um so at least here in germany we had like the two summers in in 2020 and 2021 there was there was a little there was a little bit live stuff going on with uh, you know uh keeping a distance like reduced cap capacities and then also masks and stuff um and 
now we're it's it's we're we're in a very very weird place kind of as we are supposed to 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 let go of the restrictions on sunday or whatever but the numbers mm-hmm. are as high as they've never been before so um it's very very weird here um how is the 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 how, how do you feel is the situation w- where you are and uh, yeah do you f- feel it in the in like in the everyday life still do you, I mean, it's when you so, go out. <laughs> oh yeah, well, like we're we're kind of at a point, at least where I live, which is in is in the south. We're in the when the in the belt buckle of the Bible Belt, Tennessee, and um, you know, I the, unfortunately the place where I hail from is one of the places, the one of the states that uh, you know they didn't really care about mandates. We had really high COVID. Um, deaths and uh infections and that sort of deal um somehow i'm still you know i took every precaution and still do i still i'm still masking um when i have to go out and and around a lot of people but uh it's it wasn't really taken very seriously by a lot of people around where i live because they (laughs) believe in really stupid things and (laughs) um shows have been happening and like frankly like you know it's it really does go you know boil down to the fact that like the people who have been vaccinated and got their boosters and all that other stuff they you know they're not going they're not getting sick you know and if they are it's for like three days or four days and then they're fine and uh you know i i think i somehow haven't gotten it but uh you know people who haven't taken those precautions, you know, and they go out to shows and then they're, they're down for like two weeks because they got COVID, you know, and nobody else at the show or something would have gotten it, you know, because they were vaccinated. And, um, I think like it it really is just kind of weird, uh, maneuvering around all of that because, um, some people just don't really care about, they, they don't see the big picture. They don't really, see further than the inconvenience uh brought on them rather than the overall uh health of of our society you know and and so i don't you know because like you know people would rather like you know take ivermectin than just get a shot in the arm you know yeah it can get pretty ridiculous but as, as far as touring has gone um I would say it hasn't really drastically affected maybe attendance um, or whatever. Like we, we've done our shows and people show up and, you know, we, we stay safe. Yeah. And um, we plan on doing so on this next run as well. But um, it's made, it has made attendance kind of strange. Cause like a lot of people, yeah. including myself, like have <laughs> almost like, you know, trauma. Yeah. Uh, being around crowds and stuff like that. Cause like, I swear, like after the pandemic, and all that, like I, I, even though I'm a performer, even though I get on stages and I and, and everything, um, I have more anxiety uh, in public now than I than I did before because you know it's just and it's not even like I'm not even necessarily about worried about getting myself sick. I'm worried about getting other people sick, mm-hmm. but like it's still one of those things, you know, because like actually like when the pandemic started, I was working at a grocery store, and when you see all the shelves are empty and like there's people like beating the hell out of each other for basic necessities that kind of that kind of stuff stays with you and um you know i um i think like with the with the touring and everything i think we're kind of getting back to the way it was in that regard i literally just saw judas priest in an arena like not even a week ago and that was that's the first time i've done anything like that since the before the pandemic well I actually I did see King Crimson last year, but it was a smaller venue. But yeah, your concert and, going and, is, is is a fundamentally different experience. Yeah, you know? and and King Crimson was probably seated. I would yes. guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So it was Priest, actually. Believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Oh damn! Yeah, well, I I did uh, see uh, King Crimson like five six years ago here in here in Germany yeah. um where they were also playing seated venues like more like the you know the classical concert halls almost um yes. here, here in Europe and um like mostly 
and uh, yeah but i've never seen priest and i, I think it, it i i i had the feeling that i i might feel weird uh experiencing priest sitting live sitting down yeah. <laughs> yeah well i mean like to be fair everybody stood up you know because it was a <laughs> priest you know but like uh but, but there was seating that was the weird thing because like like yeah it was it was like in a, it was a it was a arena it was like a straight up arena or they have sporting events and things like that um and like like you mentioned last the, the king crimson show i saw was at a place called the ryman and uh it's it's it was an old church back in the day you know it still has pew sitting you know so like yeah these, these things are slowly happening again. yeah they're, they're they're happening and a lot of the mandates around here for like you know now you can get into shows without having a vax card and stuff like that which yeah <laughs> i guess technically more people are gonna come but you're like it is, it is yeah i mean like you can't really stop it at this point unfortunately and that's kind of the uh the unfortunate reality of it and it's really up to the you know there's not as much of a widespread um like effort as much to like you know keep this infection from spreading it's more like up to the individual at this point yeah yeah um um i've just checked uh, uh on the side uh judas priest is playing in munich on june 27th um in a venue that's not going to be seated definitely not <laughs> <laughs> don't catch but, it <laughs> Really good. I, I, I really hope uh, I'll be able to, as it's kind of a bucket list band. I, I, I did, I did see Maiden, uh, even though I'm a bigger Priest fan. <laughs> but it's That's all right. it's it's all down to opportunity and and uh, um, like a, a yeah. ability, uh, financial or whatever. That at the time those bands come around. So yeah. I, I I had I was lucky when uh, Iron Maiden played the Rockavaria Festival uh, a couple of years back here in Munich and uh, through my old uh, employer, which was the Hard Rock Cafe Munich, I got some tickets. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, yeah! I only reason I got to see Priest is I ended up on the guest list. So yeah, same same here for for a lot of stuff. <laughs> I have to yeah. admit, and um, yeah. Yeah, but but here's it, yeah, it's it's also slowly getting uh, I'm back here and but but the overall situation is also um the I, I have the feeling the the um, government is um at wit's end with their <laughs> measures and uh, well nothing helps anymore so they 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 might as well just uh, lift every, uh, everything and <laughs> whatever. I don't know. Europe has handled it a lot better than we have. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, let's be real here. And I mean, like, there's been tragedies on either side, sure. But I mean, like, you know, I mean, hey, y'all, y'all had, y'all had Merkel. We had Trump. So, <laughs> you know, it was, it was a lot. Um, uh, mo- moving on from one dif- difficult topic to another, maybe uh, if 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 you don't mind talking about it, but but as I know Max and and I would uh, assume that you uh, Ali is you you're also I think you're also comfortable with it. If if not, mm-hmm. let just just let me know. As we we just um, uh, my new uh, work is with the Film Fest Munich, and we just um uh did a seminar uh this last weekend about diversity in film in germany and uh Mm -hmm. i mean you are kind of um i i remember max telling me that that uh, that you ali were were like a like a role model for her almost like seeing what you do on stage being uh who you are and uh showing the world to see hey this is me uh which is which is which is awesome and this kind of representation uh was of course also uh uh what uh we we talked about on the on the seminar uh with with a lot of um people from the film industry here in germany and we also mm-hmm. had the british film institute uh visiting uh to to present their their experiences and and what what they did in the last years to to um help make uh, the film industry more inclusive and more 
more representative of the um, of the society of the diverse society. And uh, I, I really, I really like uh, talking about this. I also had the opportunity to talk uh, to Max about it, as I had the feeling, like, like with, with. Uh, sorry about my huge introduction, because uh, I always, always have the feeling that you know, uh, rock music, hard rock, and and metal is like you know, it, it's still associated a lot with with. It's still a like, boys' game. Yeah, and 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 yeah. and you know the the original uh, bands they are all like old man now and like like growing older and older. That's that's yeah. that's normal. That's the that's the the way of uh, time, uh, wh whatever. Um, but um, also the fan base, of course, they like like the if you take the the average Led Zeppelin fan maybe probably is gonna be a, 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 a man going uh, into his 60s whatever um, right. and uh, it is also associated some sometimes uh, uh, still to this day with um, with old guys who are who might not be as inclusive as we wish um on the other hand i in the last years what i have seen um uh, both in the audience but also uh, especially from artists uh is that 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 it's becoming more diverse and more inclusive so um if you uh, would share your experience over the last years with us i think that's that that, yeah. that would be really cool well um I mean, you know, it's 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 one of those things, you know, with me. Uh, I I you know when I first started Flomix and we had our our couple of demo albums out, and even leading up to the release of Intellectual Hooliganism, I was uh, I was primarily known as Blake Bellinger. Um, I uh, you know I had I had this whole I can't say totally different vibe really, but. Um, you know, I had a beard <laughs> and, um, and like, you know, it's, um, I, I figured out I was trans and it was one of those things where I was like, you know, I, I kind of went through this period of like, because like you said, um, there's not really a lot of bands out there that are doing, you know, that, that have like transgender members that are really doing it, you know, and at least, you know, at the time it's sort of been like, 20 early 2018 when i was figuring all this stuff out and it's yeah, definitely coming up yeah and uh it was you know like seeing bands like sarah and the safe word uh and doomstress um made me go oh okay so this is possible for me and uh i started uh hrt literally the day after intellectual hooliganism dropped um and uh I've just, and so I've had to more or less, because a lot of people, you know, when they transition, they're not really already in the public eye. And even though I, it wasn't like major or anything, you know, I was still, people were coming to my shows, people were buying records. And uh, I, it was something I had to address, you know, I was like, hey, so this is a thing, um, by the way. And, you know, for the most part, um, within like the fan base and everything, um, it was a very positive reaction. And, to be fair, because of that, you know, we've kind of been loop looped in with a lot of other bands that feature trans members, whether we're, we sound anything like them or not. And <laughs> which, you know, I mean, that's that's what you get, though. I mean, it's the same exact thing with any other, uh, you know, woman fronted band. You know, you'll have fucking Arch Enemy in the same category as Evanescence for some reason. That makes no sense. But there's a girl, <laughs> you know, so like uh and we've we've kind of got gotten that sort of experience a little bit but you know like for me it's like i going back to judas priest um rob halford once said you know in response to an interview about you know like he was like it, they were playing like russia or something where being gay is still le illegal and uh so are you you know somebody asked him like you know, are you going to make a statement or anything like that? And Rob Halford basically said, I am the statement. And that's kind of both the way I approach things. Um, and uh, because like, I didn't really realize, I guess the, 
the depth of this of, of what I was doing until like other trans people were coming to our shows and telling me that uh, they felt safe that they felt like they belonged um when they came to our shows and they listened to our music and I just try to you know I just try to be the person that um I would have needed to see when I was 14 13 or whatever because I mean like all of my heroes were mostly white men you know uh and um but I mean like you know not obviously not completely relegated to that but it's like you said like it's it's only within the most recent years that things have started to kind of broaden and um I mean like I've been trying to lead a bit of an example you know like um actually you know uh Sarah Rose from Sarah and the Safe Word you know we were actually talking to her the other day she's another trans feminine uh vocalist for a band and um they're doing really well right now and you know we were talking about how like we're basically having to write the field manual on how to how to be a trans feminine like uh front person who is really doing it you know isn't just trying to be like a local band cuz you know I love Nashville. I love Tennessee. I don't want to just be relegated to playing shows here for for the same people I've been playing shows for for the last ten years. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to come to your side of the ocean. You know. I want to come. Uh, we want to conquer here. the world. We want to conquer the world. Yeah. You know, in the nicest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like we said, um, as as people who are out. Um, you are automatically branded an advocate, whether you like it or not. Yeah, an ambassador, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, and that's actually what we were kind of talking about with Sarah from Sarah and the Safe Word uh, the other day was just like, um, just trying to remind each other that we are in short supply in the sense that, you know, especially being singers in the groups that we're in, because Sarah and the Safe Word, she's the singer. You know, you're the singer. I have others by no one where I'm the singer. And... um so we basically just have each other to talk to you share these experiences with um and like like you said as a result people kind of look to you as this sort of emblem like emblematic of like you know you said diversity and um being a beacon for a younger generation and while that can definitely be stressful it, it's it's definitely a very beautiful thing it's mm-hmm. crazy to be in a band like this um with so many vocally queer members um or just anyone who's part of you know the LGBT, lgbtq plus um, you know, we, we just, it's, it's not something you see every day, especially seeing the two of us in a band. It's not something you see every day. There's two of us in the same band. Isn't that weird? Yeah. And the stuff we do is, is really, really out there and really interesting. And I think us being very, um, forward about, you know, like you said, we are the statement. We, yep. do, we have fun. We do what we do. And us being who we are, if it's a voice for other people, then it makes it even more worth it to do this thing. It's possible for or for other people besides us, you know, and that's one thing that, um, you know, I kind of want to get across really because, you know, if it weren't for me seeing a couple of those other artists, you know, I might, I might still be probably not, but I, I definitely would have been more stuck in my ways about it, you know, because I mean, I was legitimately like afraid, like, what if I transition and I, I don't, and I'm not as good of a performer or I'm not the same kind of a performer and, uh, Turns out I was a better performer. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and, and I mean, it's just about, you know, the fact that I'm like comfortable in this vessel that I have to inhabit. And uh, that makes my confidence and uh, ferocity heightened. You just you just said uh, like uh, showing showing other uh, people that it's possible to do this um and uh well the news that we're getting over here uh from the united states uh about um yeah well some new legislation being passed in some of the states of the united states is quite worrying uh, i would say for 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 me even as a as a uh i, I wouldn't be um Uh, affected by it if <laughs> right. i lived there um so so does this make it even more important for you to show here we are we are it, it, it is the 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 most most normal thing that there's a 
weird band that's not weird because uh to because we're uh, trans it's just because we're batshit yeah yeah exactly (laughs) that's what i I wanted to say well i mean like you know and and as far as like that like currently like the state that i'm currently living in that i'm sitting in right now it is illegal for me to go to the bathroom (laughs) uh publicly yeah um which i mean like you know there's no way of really like uh pushing that law you know unless you're like pulling everybody's pants down before you know with a with a guard or something you know but like yeah. and nobody ever questioned like i just have this the privilege of passing to most people most people who meet me don't know that i'm trans um but like i you know it, it, it still affects a lot of my uh my other trans siblings and they're also trying to pass legislation here in tennessee where not only the, like like how they're doing in Texas where um uh trans kids um their parents can't get them like hormone uh blockers, blockers yeah. Uh, yeah they they can't have that um they're trying to pass that here but they're also trying to go a step further and make it to where uh transgender adults on like government uh insurance medicare or whatever can't get their hormones which is most of us myself included yeah. and um in my case it would actually be like incredibly detrimental to my health um because i i actually have had an orchiectomy and because of that um i if if i just stop taking estrogen i basically enter menopause like that so <laughs> i have to like have have that or i basically i'm going to be like a 30 year old going through menopause you know and also develop osteoporosis like pretty much immediately as well um because that was something i you know when i had that procedure done they're like you got to do this I'm like that's not a problem i'll you know i love this stuff but yeah it's it's, <laughs> it's it's no there's no shortage of spooky news for us on the daily over here um which we're you, dying it, like you said um it makes it even more important for us to be out and about doing the thing it i mean because you know we wanted we've been taking our traveling surface surface traveling circus around for this last little while and we're about we just got a new vehicle so we really want to start going around and just like I swear every show we do, someone comes up and says, like, we love that you're doing what you do because you are who you are, right? As well as um, uh, something else I just wanted to say was I love that within the group, we've had such support. Yeah. Not that I thought for a moment the people that we have wouldn't be like that. You know, you can't take that for granted either. Like, we, we just write about being, you know, trans. Like, there's plenty of lyrics on our upcoming record that are about that. And, you know, Trans Girls Need Guns is the song that the band is known for the most. Yeah. Um, at least on a, you know. That pissed, that pissed people off on both sides of the fence. It did. Um, as it goes sometimes. But yeah, it, it's more, more of a pointed um, reason to do what we do. Because we just, you know, it's hard enough to survive as a musician, let alone a musician who's extremely marginalized, you know, in a country that doesn't necessarily, um, isn't always the most hospitable. Right. Um, so yeah, it's great doing what we do because it can it raises some awareness in some way, and it encourages some people. Just need that validating statement at the right time, and for a lot of people, we've been that. So you know, that's that's a really good thing, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you you two are wonderful, and uh, you're you're really glowing over there. I'm I'm so happy to have you Thank here you. on the show, it's, and, it's and the I, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just happy you you, you were talking uh, so openly about everything. Um, Mm -hmm. and of course, uh, uh, you told us a lot about Reflamox, the new Flamox album that is out since April 1st, um, Flamox is on tour in the U S right now. Um, and for that, you will have to check all the socials out there, you know, uh, where to find them. And that's in the description below. Um, and maybe also somewhere on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, and um yeah uh thank you guys out there for watching uh thanks max and ali for being on the show it was uh wonderful thank you so much and um thank you, thank you. yeah also we of course we also have our socials and if you want to uh, see more content of us you can also click uh, the subscribe buttons everywhere and uh, i guess we'll uh see and you you will see and hear me uh in the next episode as well uh until uh that time 
Take care of yourselves and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.